Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning back into an SP Tuning video. Today we are working on just any engine mount, specifically actually for a daily driver, Toyota Camry, which we're applying this method to, but this uh, method you can use on any variety of vehicle. A lot of people used to do it for racing cars if they couldn't afford expensive mounts. We've actually used it in the past on a couple of our Integras back in the day, and uh, it's really simple method. As you saw in the beginning of the video, in the intro, we just went to our local Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever type of hardware store that you have local to you, and we picked up uh, this polyurethane-based sealant. Now, this is used a lot in construction for roofing, window seals, uh, for bathrooms, for kitchens, a whole bunch of applications. It's essentially like a rubber, if you would. If you would, it's like a rubber uh, sealant polyurethane actually, but it's very similar in consistency and a lot of racing mounts are already made using this exact same type of material. Obviously when you buy engine mounts already made, then those already have sealed or uh, cured polyurethane and they're machined down to size and press pressed into the mount. This is the liquid version. Uh, obviously it's not the exact same, but it works very well. Uh, we're gonna go show you guys right now exactly the mount that we're using, but like I said, this can be used on any specific engine mount, any mount in general. Just follow the exact same um, method behind it and you can do it at home. The mount that we're actually using is this uh, top torque mount that comes off of a 2003 Toyota Camry. We were in the middle of replacing the condenser as well as the AC compressor. And uh, we saw that this one was, was all cracked and figured that this is what was causing the engine to shake upon takeoff. Uh, it's a daily driver, it's not like we're launching it or anything, but it could use the sealant. Now, we've done this in the past, this is the RSX that we're currently building. We've done this in the past into our track Integra, uh, then we ended up switching to billet mounts in the future, but um, back in the day we used to run that and it used to work phenomenal. It's, it's kind of like an at-home trick. And uh, if you look over here, the mount that we're actually experimenting on has cracks all around the center, and obviously it's uh, made to have that little groove on the side just to add a little bit of play but they always break you can see the movement right there and you can imagine with with the torque of a car when you take off that's just going to load backwards and it goes right here so the top of the engine actually rocks backwards first step in this whole process would actually be degreasing the mount itself or what's left of it uh, you can use any off the shelf degreaser or don detergent any type of thing that'll remove grease or oil because whenever you have some a part like this there's always some type of buildup or dirt or grime whatever you want to call it and uh, after you do that what you're going to do is tape off one side we just have some regular tape right there i'm going to tape one side completely and this side looks the most damaged the part that actually moves the most this side looks okay not okay but less damage so we're going to tape off this side right here that way when we start filling it we can fill a little bit of the top crack and uh, get as much into the like penetrate as possible so i'm going to tape this part off right here with just some tape it doesn't need to be perfect or anything we're just going to stop the gel or the, the the sealant from coming out the other side and keep it on the actual mount itself all right like i said this part is taped off and if you see most engine mounts have the center portion uh, kind of blocked off just how the polyurethane is cast from the factory but you're still able to put uh, like sealant in there it's not completely blocked off this one is open a little more so when we get this sealant you can cut to size the tip we're going to cut as small as possible to be able to get into those crevices and push it onto the back side and uh, always if you don't get full penetration when you take the tape off eventually once it's dry then you can always add some more on the other side but we're going to start by cutting a small bit off this tip all right, so we went ahead and cut the tip off right there. I actually found a gun that we had laying around and then with a little screwdriver, just poke the top. That way it releases and opens the bottle. Now I'm gonna start spraying, like I said, pushing as far in as possible to get through to the other side. If my gun decides to work nice. Basically gonna like pressure it into there until it starts oozing back at me. All right, so as I was pushing it in, it was filling the back end, and now you can see that it's coming out the top. And right here, you can tell that it's ballooned outwards because it's uh, filled all the way at the bottom. You can always get the excess off later once you already have all the filling done. Go. I 
that's fully filled. It looks good. It looks like frosting. Kind of want some cake right now. The next part is going to be a lot easier if you have some gloves so you don't get messy. And I'll show you why in just a sec. All right, you can see that for the most part, the backside is ballooned because it's nice and filled. Now for the front, it all looks like this cake frosting consistency. I'm gonna get a, uh, a glove on and just smooth it out right there. You can see, you don't wanna get this stuff on your finger because then it's just kind of a pain to take off. Now the dry time on this really depends on how much you use, how thick it goes in, but it's normally about a day or two. I like to keep it about two days with nice heat from the sun before I put it back into the car. That way there's no chance of it not being fully cured. Okay, there we go. And uh, there's different types of it. This isn't the strongest one, but I also didn't want to get the super strong one since this is just a daily driver. Although it's solid, it won't be the super, super rough one. Okay. Yeah, so there is a ton of sealant right here. And it's a good thing that we took it off because you can see it's on the top, it's on the bottom, but it's not very much on the sides or around the center pin, which actually holds the uh, bushing onto the engine. So I'm gonna get another glove right now and spread it along a little bit. Just gonna spread this along the sides, nice and as even as possible. Give us a nice strong mount. towards the center as well. Try to build up the polyurethane to be nice and strong all around. The other side looks just as good. So I'm gonna keep it uh, kind of sitting like this for the time being, just so it can start to dry. And I'll keep my eye on it for the next hour or so to see if it starts running by any chance. It normally doesn't, but you never know. And then after that, it'll just be up to the curing process. While we were waiting for the front side to actually uh, set and start curing, I also did the back end. There was a small crack on each side and it didn't look like it was affecting as of right now, but it could eventually lead to uh, some affection in the future. So we went ahead and filled both those sides. It's not as deep and has the crevices that this side has, but it still is worthy of uh, adding on to there. All right, guys, so it's been about 30 to 45 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. It's still, as you can see, getting on my fingers, but none of the polyurethane has actually dripped off or run or anything. It's actually strong enough to hold itself under its, under its own pressure. So I'm going to leave it out here in the sun to uh, kind of bake itself on there. And I was reading it. The set time should be in about a couple hours, so it gets hard on the outside. And full cure happens after about uh, three to four days. So that's when we'll actually be putting it back onto the car. If you have the time to wait or you have an extra set of mounts, this is a perfect thing for you. It only costs like six bucks and you can do this at home with very basic tools. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about this or other racing or daily driver questions, uh, make sure to leave it down in the comment section below. We can always make more videos or check back to the channel, SB Tuning, and uh, check out some of our older stuff if you want to look at racing as well as drifting. We have our all-wheel drive CRX under the tarp right there and just a whole bunch of stuff all around. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.